Hello, Ray Phoenix here. Welcome to Let's Play Jumping Flash Free Rabbit Mondia Part 3. So we're doing another routine falling through the rings again level. We have to go for every single ring, or at least most of the rings, and for absolutely nothing other than just to progress the story of this game. And how we even progress the story of this game, this game doesn't even have much of a story to begin with. This guy's just gonna ramble on about a bunch of useless crap that probably has nothing to do with the plot at all, or nothing to do with anything really, anything relevant or important, something that's probably never gonna live on in history. This is never routine falling through the rings. That's the biggest problem I have with this game is that it's way too repetitive. This game makes you do the same stuff over and over again. It gets boring quickly. I think this game could have been a lot better if it was more like the first two jumping flashes where you do two levels of collecting jet pods or rescuing moo-moos and then you have to fight a boss. I think this game would have been better if it had something like that. But because it's a later PS1 game, it could have had like maybe more levels or more stuff like that. It could have been a bit more inventive, maybe was still staying true to the original formula, I think. Maybe there could have been side quests or things like that in addition to what the game is. That could have, that this game probably would have been better if they did something like that. But no, they just made it simply, it's a time of peace. I guess you could say Jumping Flash Free is one of the only video games ever that's set during a time of peace where there's no real conflict in any kind of world, because pretty much every video game ever is, for, is centered around some kind of conflict. Even Pong, the very first game ever, was clearly some sort of conflict. Because there's two bars and you have to bounce the ball back and forth, back and forth kind of thing. So it's a sense of conflict away. Pac-Man was a conflict. He was running away from ghosts. Was it a time of peace? Probably not, because there are ghosts after Pac-Man. Clearly when ghosts are after Pac-Man, that can't be a time of peace. Even the Mario Brothers game, that wasn't a time of peace. The sewers were infest- or the drain pipes were infested with critters of all sorts, evil creatures of some kind. So clearly that couldn't have been a time of peace either. So Jumping Flash Free clearly is the first or one of the very only games I've ever played before that's set during a time of peace. Or just simply doing chores for people. Yeah, just the simple chores. And look, we're just gonna do chores for this old lady thing that probably lost them, that lost something in the sky, and we have to go pick her laundry or something like that. We have to go recover her laundry for her. Yeah, because recovering laundry, you know our world is really good when Robert's only concern is recovering some old lady's laundry, right? I guess our, I guess that's actually good for the people of this world, then. Then we must be doing really good as a species. I can imagine what our world would be like if the worst conflicts that ever happened were the conflicts in this video game. We probably have far futuristic technology by now. We probably have civilizations on the moon and Mars by now. But oh no, we have conflicts which really put us to a major, which really gave us a major setback. So we have to go and recover those boxers that that lady lost. And then once you recover them, then she's just gonna say, Oh, thank you, Robert, for doing that. We don't even really get much for it. I mean, this kind of could be a good way to make money. I know, maybe Robert's kind of short on cash, and maybe he needs more cash or something. I don't know how much money Universal City Hall pays him to do what we're doing, but surely it can't be that much. See, we just got a collectible card there, so I'm sorry, another collectible card, which I think those are completely useless. Or maybe they do serve some kind of purpose, I have no idea. But that thing's just falling there. If we had, if this truly was like super mode and jump, or hyper mode and jumping block, one and two, we'd be able to jump high enough to collect those boxers easily, but we can't because this is because even though Robert has like that special fall to the ground really fast, ground pound like power from from jumping flash one and two and super and hyper mode, he doesn't seem to have he doesn't seem to have the ability to jump five times in this game. It's just three times like it was in the in just like three times. This would be a lot easier if we could jump a lot more. I don't even think there is a super mode or hyper mode in this game. But then again, why would it have it like that? This game is complete, clearly completely different from the first two games. More, it's like a Monty Python skit almost. It's more different than Monty Python. And now for something completely different. We give you Jumping Flash Free. Yeah, this is like, this is like a, you know, the... I can see why, I can see why this game only came out in Japan. It is very dull compared to the first two. It's still compared to a lot of other games that made it big in North America. But then again, this I think the Jumping Flash series is kind of like the Ape Escape series. It was big in Japan, but never really took off much in never really took off that much in, in North America, I don't think, or in other parts of the world. Just like Ape Escape would explain why there's also only three games in the main Ape Escape series, and there still hasn't been any more since. Just like Jumping Flash, this is another series that Sony clearly abandoned. So I'm just gonna ramble on about more nonsense that probably has nothing to do with anything to do with this game. And Damon will look Rob and say, oh yeah, I just rescued your boxers for nothing. And all it did was somehow progress the game, if that makes any sense. Yeah. 
So game, how many ever games make you do? It's me remember Mega Twins and something like this, right? To collect them, the, the boss's boxers after you kill him, but that was about it. Mega Twins had a much deeper story than this game, and that was a simple arcade game that came out like nine years or so earlier. So now these people are just rambling on about a bunch of crap. I don't even know how to dub, how to redub this. I don't know. Maybe I could make my own redubs of this game. Just thinking, ah, uh, what's going on? I think my, I think something broke or scattered her. Oh, look, it's Robin. He looks like, ah, uh, it's Robin again. Oh, hello, Robin. Oh, something really bad has happened. I think we need you to solve our problem. It probably involves something to do with some... I don't know, probably collecting something. I'll just go run around and collect random stuff. Go run around and flail your arms around for something. Oh look, there's some another character. I think it has some sort of relevance to the plot just appeared right now. I have no idea what her name is. She's like some 14-year-old girl. She's clearly not human because she has green skin. And again, Baron Aloha wasn't a human either. And yet he looked so much human. Like, looked like the Japanese or German human. He probably was German. German alien, I don't know, do they have Germans in space in this? I don't even know what year this is supposed to be anyways. It's supposed to be sometime in the future, but what is the future? Some people thought in, the, in 1995, a lot of people thought we'd have like, we'd have like sci-fi, a futuristic world by 2007. There's a button that looks like it was brought right from the original Ape Escape, and this game actually came out a few months after the original Ape Escape. I wonder if they somehow stole that. It even makes the same kind of sound too, and it was pressed. Maybe that same kind of sound the button presses make in the original Ape Escape when they when you press those things. So now we're pretty much running a gauntlet again. This is a gauntlet that we have to do several times over throughout this game. First, we're going after the innocent Kiwi that do absolutely nothing to us but just be there. Yeah, what a victim of circumstance. They were just in the wrong place the wrong time. How cliche is that? And more bosses, this one taking on the bigger Kiwi things. Those things that look like, I don't know, they look like they could, they could be rejects from some kind of children's show. And apparently these things are bosses, they actually have like a health meter there, so I guess you could say these aren't the first bosses in the game. But again, what is the first boss of the game? Because this game has non-linear gameplay. And oh look, it's Quack from Peep in the Big Wide World. Somehow Quack from Peep in the Big Wide World made it into this game. It's not exactly the same, obviously, but it is very close. It's probably just a coincidence. But I wonder, but even if it was a coincidence, I wonder if there were any lawsuits related to that, because Peep in the Big Wide World did exist at the time this game was made. So maybe there was, there could have been a lawsuit potentially about that. I have no idea. I but I doubt that. It's probably just a coincidence. Kind of like how some people say my art style looks a lot like Robot Boy. A lot of the Jason and Mason characters look very well like they could fit into Robot Boy. And yeah, I guess you could say they're kind of right about that. But I swear I never saw Robot Boy prior to making Jason and Mason, so that was just a pure coincidence. And that's probably what it was for this game, too. It's probably just a pure coincidence. I mean, only so many character designs could possibly exist in our world. You could pretty, probably, pretty much every design imaginable probably has been drawn at this point. Just because two people come up with the same thing doesn't necessarily mean they're copying each other or something like that. So we kind of just rescued her and she's like, mm, I, there's a Kiwi statue. It looks like that same Kiwi statue may have been in Jumping Flash 2 in the first level or some sort of statue in that game. So we're jumping back to our ship because apparently, oh, now Robert can jump really high. Yeah, imagine if he had the ability to do that earlier. He had to save that old lady's boxers. Yeah, that would have been an awesome thing to do. I don't know, maybe Robert likes taking his time with things. He's a time of peace. Maybe he likes slacking off. Maybe Robert is secretly the greatest slacker to have ever existed. That actually would explain a lot why he never engages in melee attacks. Instead, he just uses his magic, well, except for jumping on enemies. But he just mostly resorts to using his magic arrows, most of his weapons, or whatever you call them. And uses, like, special items and stuff like that a lot of the time, too. Maybe that's why he resorts to so much stuff like that. Maybe Robin is the biggest lazy jerk of all time. So I have to rescue this guy's carrot patch. Yeah, he has carrots that are just planted in the ground growing. He's like, oh, hello, Robin. My carrots are about to be eaten. These carrot devouring things probably doing some... No, devouring things are taking our carrots. And I'm gonna lose them all. Well, if you keep up losing your carrots, I hear electrolytes are really good for growing carrots. Maybe you should just use Gatorade or Powerade to water your, your patch. Donald Trump thought of doing that once. Maybe he should try doing that. He probably has just as much brains as Donald Trump does anyway, so... <laughs> And pretty much no one in this game has any brains anyways. The whole planet is populated with dumb people. People are clearly byproducts of America's education system. Was Japan secretly making fun of America's education system by making this game? I don't know, maybe it was a sort of joke reference to them. And now I pretty much have to play whack-a-mole, but look at that. There's, there's no way I could have saved that character. He was just under the ground. Robert has no ability to go under the ground. How could I have stopped that? 
just have to play whack-a-mole now and get them. Only there's never like a wrong thing that comes up too for you to hit and, and lose. I remember playing whack-a-mole with my fist at Chuck E. Cheese's once. That's the worst whack-a-mole I've ever played. I that Chuck E. Cheese's. I never really liked Chuck E. Cheese's that much. It was so, I was overrated. The TV lied about it. TV makes it look like it's one of the most fun places ever, but really, it's not. It's just a big frickin' lie. Maybe it was better two decades earlier. Sometimes I wish I could have went to Chuck E. Cheese's back in, like, maybe the 70s or 80s when it was new, or even in the 90s at latest. But now nah, I never got to go to Chuck E. Cheese during its glory days. That happened. Most of its glory days happened before I was born. I, I was born when arcades were dying, were becoming a dying industry. So yeah, I never really got to experience the true greatness that was Chuck E. Cheese. And then again, they supposedly recycle their own pizza. They supposedly recycle their own pizza a lot too, and they deny doing it in the corporate stores, but really I think they still, you know, do it a lot of the stores. So what level is this going to be this time around? Oh, look at that! I think we're going to a movie set. This is a film set. We're going to meet some filmmakers and directors. There's those cardboard cutouts, those columns in the first level of Jumping Flash 1. So we're pretty much going to be starring in a movie version of Jumping Flash. Yeah, this guy's making Jumping Flash, the movie, this filmmaker in front of us. That dresses like Baron Aloha. He's obviously nostalgic for the original Jumping Flash. Why else would he dress like Baron Aloha? He clearly has a thing for it. He's going on about a bunch of like, oh wow, but he's probably a director or something like that. He's like going on about how he wants to, you know, make the movie and stuff like that. And they're filming a Jumping Flash, the movie starring Robert. Yeah, getting the real Robert to act. Is this even is the same Robert? I don't even know. I'm starting to think this might not even be the same Robert from Jumping Flash 1 and 2. Or maybe he is. He's got serious makeovers since the first two. If they really wanted this to be an accurate retelling of the original Jumping Flash, they should have painted Robert white and made him look more like he did in the original game. Maybe bring back some more stuff from the original game too. So you can see in this level, it's, just, it's supposed to look like 1-1 or vaguely resemble 1-1 from the original Jumping Flash. We have to collect the four jet pods and then jump on the exit. Jumping Flash, the movie that we're starring in. This is clearly a film set. Yeah, that's clearly a film set. You can jump in the water there and go for a swim, which was something they mostly added in Jumping Flash 2. I mean, there was one water segment in the original Jumping Flash in World 4-2, but, yeah, but it wasn't really, didn't really have water physics or anything. That, that was Jumping Flash 2 that added water physics to Jumping Flash. They even had the second last boss in extra mode of Jumping Flash 2 set entirely underwater. Because they somehow think that with low buoyancy or some buoyancy underwater would make the boss fight more challenging. But did it? Nah, not really. Okay, maybe vaguely more challenging, but... Since because you move slower underwater, you know, it's hard to run fast underwater. But again, Robert doesn't really run very fast but anyways. He's always very slow and sluggish. He would never win a running race. Even on super mode, he would never really win. He's not that fast. I mean, it's kind of funny how this game clearly, these games clearly took some inspiration from the Sonic the Hedgehog games, which are very fast paced. But this game doesn't really have much. Well, I mean, he's not really that fast. He's more like Rayman in terms of speed. Because Rayman's considered to be an anti Sonic the Hedgehog because of how slow he moves. I remember a friend saying that about Rayman when I tried introducing Rayman to a friend. So now he's good. the director is going to observe us and then can say, Ah, oh, cut. Oh, that was an awesome take you did there, Robert. You did really well. We're going to make you a big action star. You're going to be bigger than, I don't know, Jackie Chan or someone like that. I don't know. I'm going to make you a big action star. You have to jump back. You have to jump to unreasonable heights to go back to that ship thing. That ship thingy mubobber thing and reconnect there and... And it's just going to take us back to the map as usual. So yeah, this is just a standard old map. Oh look, we got a newspaper article to read. What's, what's in the newspaper? It's probably going to be stuff about Jumping Flash the movie. Yeah, it is. Here's Baron Aloha and Robert Jumping Flash the movie. Yeah, this is Ray Phoenix signing out.